So, let's put two things together. Sound is made up of wiggles, sine waves. Sine waves stacked on top of sine waves. With the right combination of sine waves, you can make any sound because all sounds are made up of wiggles on top of wiggles. Then, the way that electrons move within a wire is an exact parallel of the way that air molecules move in the air. Which is to say, if you can move, if you can, well, let me put it this way. If you can wiggle electrons in the same way that you wiggle air molecules, you'd get the same sound. So imagine what would happen if you could create a device that could create the whole spectrum of different sine wave amplitudes and frequencies. If you had a way to move electrons in sine wave shapes, couldn't you theoretically, electronically create any sound? Yeah. And that was the thinking of Thaddeus Cahill, inventor and musician around the turn of the 20th century. He had the idea that if you took a giant cog and you rotated it next to an electromagnetic receiver, that you would basically be able to push electrons, wiggle electrons in sine wave shapes. If you think of the shape of a cog, it's got those teeth, right? Well, those teeth are basically sine waves. So every time a tooth would pass near the electromagnetic receiver, it would push the electrons. And then in the gaps between the teeth, it was not a push. So you'd get this pushing movement, which is exactly the wiggle. It's the wiggle, it's that ruler, except it's happening in electrons. So what would happen if you had a cog like this for every note on the piano? You'd be able to create all of the frequencies that we use in music. You'd be able to create electronic tones. And then, what if, for each cog that you had, for each note on the piano, you had a whole slew of other cogs of decreasing size that would generate higher frequencies at lower amplitudes? I know this is the confusing stuff we were talking about, but that's the timbre that we hear. Timbre is just a stack of wiggles, a stack of sine waves in increasing frequency and in decreasing amplitude that define what we hear as timbre. So if you had all of these giant rotating cogs and they could all push electrons in sine wave shapes, you'd be able to author sound. That's what Thaddeus Cahill was thinking. So he built this device. And unfortunately, this was before we had amplifiers. So for these things to be audible, they had to be big. You had to move a lot of electrons to be able to move the primitive speaker that he decided he was going to use, which I'll talk about in a second. So these cogs were gigantic. What we're talking about is this instrument that Thaddeus Cahill envisioned, the Telharmonium, was essentially a giant power plant moving giant cogs, which were basically acting as dynamos. This device, the Telharmonium, the principle of it was cogs generated frequencies that could be combined in different manners to create different timbres, differing amplitude, differing frequency. It was all controlled by a keyboard. Now, I mentioned a speaker, but let's remember that speakers really hadn't been invented at this point except for in one form. There was another invention that was becoming widespread right at that same time, which was the telephone. So it was Thaddeus Cahill's idea that you could electrically generate music and sound and then electrically disseminate it to telephones. So he had basically created a, a Muzak service for the telephone. And that was his goal. So he did a lot of tests. It worked beautifully. Everyone was amazed. Um, finally, he moved this arrangement to downtown New York City. But unfortunately, the music generated by this device interfered with normal telephone operation, which was frowned upon. So unfortunately, this incredible device, which employed additive synthesis, for the first time, additive synthesis being stacking sine waves atop each other to create sounds, it uh, didn't work out. 
Luckily, though, the concept continued. And after we had created amplifiers, which we'll talk about, another device in the future implemented this exact same technology uh, with great success, and that is the Hammond organ. The Hammond organ took those giant cogs and with the help of amplifiers, was able to shrink them down into little tone wheels that had the very same effect. Of course, we know uh, the Hammond organ was very successful. And the Hammond organ is the direct offspring of the telharmonium. So the telharmonium lives on with the Hammond organ. But basically, this is the cornerstone of our story. This is the cornerstone of the development of electronic music and the development of synthesis was this incredible electromechanical additive synthesizer that was built around the turn of the century.